Today we'll be continuing on the topic of ionic bonding. Uh, in the previous lesson, we learned how to draw dot and cross diagrams. Today we'll be looking at what forms an ionic bond. And then we'll go through a few examples of how to write down the chemical formula for ions and including polyatomic ions. Okay, so let's start with ionic bonding. What is it? It's actually a type of bonding that forms between metals and non-metals. So we look at the metals first. Okay, what we know about metals is that they actually tend to lose a valence electron. And when they lose valence electron, as we learned before, there will be more protons as compared to electrons. And this will result in them forming what we call a cation or positive ion. So we see metals lose the electrons and they form cations. Doing the same for the non-metals. So for non-metals, instead of losing valence electrons, they tend to gain valence electrons. And on the other hand, as compared to metals, when they gain valence electrons, they will have more negative charges and they will form what we call anions. which are negatively charged. So what happens is that when you have two opposite charges, a positive and a negative charge, they will have something between them which we will call the electrostatic force of attraction. So whenever we talk about an ionic bond, it is actually an electrostatic force of attraction that occurs between a cation and an anion. Okay, so writing formula, first of all, what are some important things that you need to know is that we have recalled that group 1 metals, they tend to form okay, positive ion, group 2, they will tend to form Two plus ion, and group three will form three plus ion. Okay. For the non-metals, we were looking at group five. They will form three minus group six, which will form. 2 minus and group 7 which usually forms a 1 minus. So these are the charges that relate to the periodic table. Transition metals, these are the most common transition metals that we use and you can see that the Roman numerals indicate the charge. So for this thing, lead, copper and iron, you see the 2, it means that it has a charge of 2 plus. For iron 3, it will have a charge of 3 plus. For silver and zinc, they have a charge of plus and two plus respectively. We will go about writing the formula then. Let's start with something simple. We will start with sodium and oxygen. Okay, so sodium is a group one metal. It will have Na plus. Oxygen is in group six and it has O2 minus. So one way of doing it is that an ionic compound has to have no net charge, which means the positive charge has to cancel out the negative charge. So if sodium has a plus one, oxygen has a two minus, okay, we require two positive charges in order to neutralize the two minus, which means I have two sodiums for one oxygen and the formula will be Na2O. One more example would be beryllium 2 plus and fluorine minus. So we have beryllium 2 plus, fluorine minus. You can see that the charges don't match up. We require 
another fluorine. So you have two positive charges and two negative charges and they will form BEF2. Now I'll introduce you to a different method. It's called the crisscross method. It's a shortcut for us to find out the formula of an ionic compound. Let me show how it works. Using this example, magnesium 2 plus with Cl minus, what I will do is I will take the number 2 from the magnesium, bring it down to the chlorine. And for chlorine, there's actually a number 1 here, which is not shown, then we'll bring it down to the magnesium. And what this gives us, this will give us MgCl2. So you can see that the 2 from the magnesium, you just bring it down and the 1 from the Cl, you bring it down. So we'll get MgCl2. However, the concept behind writing a chemical formula is still that the charges have to cancel out. Okay? I'll give you another example using aluminium and oxygen. Okay, aluminium is in group 3, it will form 3 plus ion. And oxygen is in group 6, it will form a 2 minus ion. So what do I need to do here? Same thing, I will take the number 3, I will bring it down. I will take the number 2, so there is a crease and a cross. And what I will form is Al2O. 